Many people, when they discover the philosophy of liberty, often grapple with some of the arguments thrown at them by statists. And one of the most difficult ones to, to wrap your head around sometimes is, what about the power vacuum, right? We can't get rid of government because then there's, there's a power vacuum and nature abhors a vacuum. Now, there is some credibility to this argument, but the way that it's thrown about without any analysis, understanding, or definitions really is a horrible display of intellectual laziness and dishonesty to simply say, well, we can't get rid of government because then there'll be another government. And you see the problem with this on its face, right? Geez, we can't have a stateless society because we might have a government come back. It's like, we can't stop somebody from mugging us because they might come back and somebody else might mug us. If, if they're not mugging us, someone else is going to mug us. You have to get past this when you understand that people are capable of governing themselves. And therein lies the answer to this question. But what is the power vacuum? Let's examine this first because people will say, but whenever you get rid of a government, someone will step in, someone will fill that power vacuum. And historically speaking, that's kind of been the case. And I'm not going to try to debate the historical record here, but rather to point out the nature of the revolution that humanity is experiencing now, this paradigm shift towards self-governance. So if there is a power vacuum, I mean, what is the source of the power in the first place, right? It's the fact that the people demand there be some power, some oversight, some authority over them. But what you know as a good philosophical libertarian anarcho-capitalist is that when they are saying we need authority, what they're really saying or what that really represents is we're willing to be exploited like this. We're willing to say we don't really want to govern ourselves. We want the government, uh, we want an entity to come in and be in charge of us. We want people to point guns at each other to determine how things go in society and how society is organized. And it's, it, we know that runs absolutely contrary to the fundamental philosophy of freedom. So how could you have a revolution based on the philosophy of liberty and still have a power vacuum? Because when you get to that point, people are not willing to suffer that tyranny. They're not willing to have that. So let, let's take another uh, historical example, because from, from the historical example, with the founding of the United States of America, we actually see exactly how the power vacuum is filled, or in this case, not filled with a, a c conventional sense of governing power. Because if you were to say, well, we can't reduce the power of government because there will be a vacuum, uh, or you can't eliminate government powers, you know, if you're making the case that you can't eliminate government entirely because there will be a vacuum, the same would hold true to, well, we can't take government down in size by 50% because there'll be 50% of a vacuum. If you really want to apply that argument consistently, you would have to apply it to the American founding by saying, well, we can't get rid of the king. There's going to be a power vacuum. I mean, if we just have a president and he has limited powers and we have a government with checks and balances and we have a Congress and a Supreme Court then and the government is wielding less power and they don't have the power to tax and to make us kiss the ring and to bow down to the royalty, there's going to be a vacuum and someone's going to fill that. And as the case has turned out from the longer view of history, yeah, it's kind of true because now the federal government in the United States has way more power over you as an individual citizen than King George III ever did over any of the colonists, except by, you know, the rights of, of the, the king to call upon his subjects to whatever. But if you want to really look at this honestly, the answer is really simple. What's going to fill the power vacuum? Self-governance, self-government, that is, you can be in charge of your own life. We know that human beings are capable of this, and this is the revolution that we are experiencing today. The revolution says no more power vacuums because they are filled with individuals who want to govern themselves. And a revolution that is maybe based on a coup and people saying, those people shouldn't be in charge, we should be in charge. Sure, then you have a government being toppled by whatever destabilizing force, whatever war, whatever has happened, filled by people who are saying, no, we should be in charge. And as long as there are people in the, in the citizenry going, yes, we should have people in government in charge of us, then you'll have that power vacuum filled. But what we are doing in evolving 
with this revolution, with this paradigm shift, to create a stateless society does not create a power vacuum. And if we are able to overthrow the current government by having this paradigm shift, this revolution of ideas, you don't have a power vacuum. You are not creating an absence of rule. You're not even creating an absence of law that would be created by the market of people governing themselves. But this revolution, this paradigm shift towards self-governance is about filling that vacuum, displacing the very concept that we are not capable of being the alphas of our own lives. And we need to submit to forceful governance by others. Voluntary means no coercion. So if you want to change people's habits or change the world, you should do it by setting... Well, we sure could use a lot of help here. Quite often for legal bullying and for expropriation of property, as in this case.